I don't know how you guys are, uh, I guess, coping with the current situation and with the news and your loved ones or, you know, you being locked in, in your house or even if you're working, you're an essential worker, whatever the case is. There's so many, there's a lot of noise going on right now. And with everything that has happened, you know, I was talking to my brother yesterday, like in our lifetimes, we've seen so many interesting things. Like not just the current COVID thing, but you know, we, Kobe Bryant died. Donald Trump became president. 9-11 happened. in our lifetimes. And God knows what will happen next. But I keep feeling like any of us can die at any moment. It's such an interesting thing, right? like right now I'm reading these two books 1984 and um, Brave New World they both talk about Big Brother and sort of like um, how a certain group of individuals control the world and can control our thoughts they're called the thought police and whatnot and I just finished Jordan Peterson's book 12 Rules for Life great book and There's a lot of conspiracy theories going on around about the situation, you know, the the virus situation and vaccines and all this hoopla, right? And in the midst of all this, I am, I'll tell you where I stand to give you some, I I can only tell you about what I'm doing, right? I can't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you what I'm doing. Um, Every day I write at least three hours. I, I shoot to write for four to five hours, but it ends up being about three hours of continuous writing. I, I take breaks, obviously, but it's like if I just count the amount of time I spend thinking and writing, it's about three hours a day. So that's one thing that's different from my side. I run every day. I run sprints. Today, I did 20 sprints right here in our neighborhood. I'm watching Masterclass. Um, I'm writing a lot of stand-up comedy bits. I've already recorded a couple that I sent to my close friends and and haven't uploaded on YouTube yet. And even that, man, like the two stand-up bits I wrote um, were quite very, very visceral, very, they were very open. I was being very vulnerable, but you know, the people I sent it to, they said it, it's hilarious. Like, they loved it. And I'm kind of afraid to put it on YouTube because, like, this... And I'll be honest with you, this this virus thing has put a scare in me and in a certain level of fear. And I just don't know how much of it is real and how much of it is made up or falsified. I don't know. But I'll tell you, to be honest, like... I just really, and this is never going to be the case, but how amazing would it be to live in a world where you are just free to do what you want? To live in a world where you can have real freedom of speech. You can just say whatever you want. Especially if your intentions are right. And obviously, intentions aren't right. Many people have evil intentions and they just want destruction for the sake of destroying, killing. I understand that. But man, what an interesting thing what you know life is. We have all these experiences and we express them, but we suffer because we can't express them. Like that's one thing I learned from Jordan Peterson in his book. Like for me, suffering is basically not being able to be me that's all that's all suffering is like not telling the truth is suffering so like the two stand-up comedy bits i came up with 
I mean, people have found it hilarious. Like, people tell me like, oh my God, Farhan, this is so good. But if this got out like to YouTube or to the world, you'd get so much backlash. You'd get so many negative things. Like people would judge you so much, even though it's comedy. Um, so I'm just scared. I haven't put it out yet. Just letting you know that. I'm spending a lot of time with family. I'm reading a lot. Um, doing a lot of yoga, a lot of stretching, a lot of mobility exercises. Lifting to an extent, like I do push-ups and squats and stuff as much as I can with like briefcases and uh, briefcase, suitcases, lift those things up. But yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I'm pretty much staying away from the news. I'm staying away from the media. Uh, every now and then I just get into it, but it's very rare. I'm just, uh, one thing that this situation has allowed me to do is when we're out of it, I'm really understanding my priorities really, really well. And I know what I need to spend my time on. And, and that's it. And one other really interesting thing that I learned from Socrates reading his stuff recently is that like you have to basically be ready to die at any moment. You can't live life like you can't let the thought come to you where if I was to die right now, I regret A, B and C like, nah, man remove all that stuff really really remove it because you are in control of that thought completely and another thing uh, that I, I'll tell you guys is uh, you know really love your parents and your family uh, take time to really get close to them and understand them because you know I used to have a lot of things against my parents but you know now I, I really I mean I've always loved them but I'm I really come to terms with stuff and I'm, you know, I'm happy and proud that they're my parents, and I'm, I'm glad that they brought me up. You know, no regrets. I, you know, I love all my family, my brother, my brother's family. I'm staying with now. Like everyone's awesome, and I'm really lucky to have had the experiences I've had in life so far, and what I will have in the future. And you know, being in Ukraine for 11 months taught me a really huge lesson in that there are situations and external environments which stifle you that limit you that limit your freedom and they're not made up they're not made up because there have been governments and empires and ideologies in in our history current modern history where and even today in the world where people are not free to think how they want people are not free to accept express themselves at all people live in fear their entire life and so i urge you guys always be in environments where you are free and you know if you guys who are listening are in canada or america or one of the nations which I believe you know we have more freedom than perhaps Russia Ukraine China those places in the world today or at least the freedom that you can see like the obvious freedom at least we feel it even if it's not real it we at least feel it I, I consider myself very lucky it's the first time I'm I feel lucky to be a Canadian and I'm proud, proud to be Canadian. Like I, I literally took the last flight out of Kiev to get, to come here. Um, yeah, and I also want to say that the moment I stepped in Heathrow Airport in London, I really felt the freedom. There was an Indian lady at the counter. I talked to her. She gave me like a free food voucher. She asked me how I was. We talked in Hindi. She's an Indian Afsha. Her name is Afsha Afsha. And uh, I really felt the difference in my heart. And, you know, a big factor is language. And this is one thing I learned. Like when my parents came to America, you know, they sacrificed a lot to bring me and my brother here and educate us here in the West. 
like they didn't speak the language and they're still not fluent like you and I are in English. And I can tell and I can now sense the the hardship and obstacles that they went through, the pain and suffering because I felt that in the Ukraine. You know, I got became pretty good at Russian, but I couldn't feel the language. I wasn't able to express myself fully like I am to you right now. And now I understand what my parents went through in America, how much fear they had. And in just bringing me and my brother up, I get it, man. I fucking get it. It was it's sad that what my parents went through and and I and I applaud them and I really commend them for doing that. And I also want to some of you might be asking uh why I why my name is Danani now instead of Kawaja, right? My name has always been Kawaja and now it's Danani. People ask why. So I'll end the video with why. So when my dad was in school, he got peer pressure to change his name from Danani to Kawaja from a bunch of people and I found this out recently and I right away changed my name back to Danani. I haven't done the official paperwork, but I've changed it all over social media, Facebook and I, you know, I all my emails and stuff so you know, I'm Farhan Danani rather than Farhan Kawaja. That's basically it. My dad was just social conditioned and peer pressured and I didn't want my last name to represent the idea of peer pressure and listening to what other people tell you to do and not standing up for yourself. So I changed my name back to Danani, which literally means of money. Dan is money. So yeah, it's a pretty cool last name. Uh yeah. That's what I'm up to nowadays. And uh comment below, let me know how how what have you learned from life in this situation and what have you experienced recently in your life which really transformed you from the inside out. Bye guys. Oh.